PBS fucked around and did a storyline on us, right? But they stick punk asses. But what they did was, they got with our attorneys. Our whole ordeal was, bro, we had to plead out on our case, man, in order to get five other individuals off the case. It's primarily our big homie, because our big homie had nothing to do with it. He shouldn't even been there. He shouldn't even been in rain. He shouldn't even got picked up, because he wasn't fucking there, period. But they was from the railroad and crossed him up with us and try to make him the leader outside of myself, because he was the oldest, and he had nothing to do with it. So in the process of, of us getting bound over before trial, we had, we had a decision to make. I get the call. You mean, I'm in the county jail, I gotta get on the phone, make this call to the hood, I get the call. The big homies tell me, bro, you niggas gotta take care of that and make sure it's right. Because you already know, the big homie got to get out. And on top of that, then we had four other individuals who was in, like Manpower and a couple other individuals, had nothing to do with, they shouldn't have been arrested. So we got all them released based on our own recurrence and our own admittance. So we went to, you know, we, we sit down, with the district attorney and each, each one of our attorneys, and we all admitted to our own recurrence based on what they had already had written. So when, when they get a dialogue to TV, this is when you hear the motherfuckers talking about, oh, such and such gave this statement, such and such gave this statement. No, we admitted to our own recurrence of what you guys had already had proof written on us from Byron Decker and um, Ben Carr. So that's when they said, well, yeah, you, you, had, you had a 38 or you had a 12 gauge and such and such had this and such and such had that. Yeah, man, yeah, no contents. And this is how we got our deal. So they gave us, a, each one of us got a deal. We pleaded out with our attorney um, and then PBS um, had us um, sign a, because um, um, we were 16 to 17 to 18 and now we was minors. So we couldn't sign no fucking release form. So our attorneys end up telling us some illegal shit that I'm looking into today because during that time, we never signed no releases for no documentary. So we never knew about this shit, period, until it merged 30 years later when I happened to see it five years on the internet. My girl hit me up and told me, babe, she said, you seen this stuff shoot out on the period? I said, what? She sent it to me and that's how I got aware of it. And then now, here, here, see, I already had this material years ago because I've been working on a TV series on it. And so I already had it tucked away trying to lock this series in. So now all of a sudden it merged to the internet through this fucking um, channel named v v Vermosa or some shit. Some old fucking ass channel named Vermosa and then uh, Bang TV, some punk shit. So they try to call themselves putting this shit up to sabotage. But it's like this, bro. You can't take, re you can't take and rewrite real history. You can't take no real man and turn us no real man. Now, it, it came on PBS back then. You know, PBS was like... a. Uh, uh, a bullshit off-brand cartoon channel to us. It only had two, like two channels on there, two, two different things you could see. Uh, the, the little cartoon about the turtle and some other little shit. So no, nobody never watched PBS. So it was never aired to the public. But the crazy part about it is, common logical sense, just to say this, man. If had us just say, any one of us did some wicked foul shit or we told and we did the shit that we did, None of us would have been able to grow to become the individuals that we are in our neighborhood, especially me. Especially me being who I am in my neighborhood and me being one of them niggas from my neighborhood and being a factor. I would have never became who I am if I had to do some shifty, shifty, shifty shit or got on the stand or pointed any of my homies out. I would never became who I am, bro, or none of the other individuals. We all went to, we went to court together. We got convicted together. We went to the fucking prison system and tore the prison system up together. How many of y'all end up um, pleading Four, guilty? Fourteen of us. It was, it was like 19 of us all together that got caught up. And there was another 19 that didn't even get arrested yet because of, we stopped it because of those pleas. If we wouldn't have stopped the plea, they was going to continue the pursuit and go pick up other bodies and take us to trial. And once they would have convicted us, everything behind us would have automatically got convicted. You feel what I'm saying? So we stopped everything, bro. Basically, bro, we took up on our own actions for our own accountants for what we did. I mean, and we did that as me, as young men. You feel me? But the only thing, only regret that I do have of it, uh, Alonzo, that I, I would say, and I want to share this with a lot of youngsters out there, what I do regret as a youngin back then, man, and making this decision because it was I. I made, once, like I said, I got the call, talked to the hood, talked to a couple of my big homies, first generation. And uh, I made this shit. I called a meeting when we got to the county jail. I called a meeting with my crimes. 
And I let them, all my crummies know, homie, we, we, we got to bite the bullet on this shit. You know what I'm saying? So everybody, we were already prepared. So we knew what we were going to do when we got the ram because I had a meeting on it already. And all of us already agreed we're going to bite the bullet so we can release the homies and stop the other shit, bro. We, we gone. Fuck it. They got us. We gone. The nigga Cody and Carr gave it up on us. They already got all the information. We gone. We out of here, man. Did you know James Hoffman Jr. personally um, prior to this thing? Yeah, I was a kid. I grew up. I used to play in the arcade. So I used to see him out there watching his, his daddy cars and stuff like that. You feel me? So yeah, we all the Hawkins, all the sons. I knew all of them and the daughters. And so there was a time where there was no issue. No, that's why I said we respected that corner because we grew up with them playing in that arcade. So we had no quarrel. The reason why the beef came, I, I'm gonna get back. To, I'm gonna go back to that real quick. But let me finish this real fast. I want to say this. As a young cat, man, even older dudes, like you got dudes who's in the penitentiary system right now today who had the same regret and wish they didn't. But what I do regret as a youngster back then was, if had I known then what I know today, that the average American in, in Los Angeles, the average cat that's a convict, this was how they entrapped us back then, all of us. Plea bargains is dangerous, bro. Plea bargains is a fucking setup because on plea bargains, you never stop doing that time. Every time you catch a case, that new case you catch, guess what? That case that you pleaded out on already becomes an enhancement. So they just now taking that enhancement off of us. They just now making a law to take that type of burden off of us. But this is how they entrapped it. thousands and thousands of prisoners right now today who still in the system because of plea bargaining, because they copped out, bro. A1, they had two eyewitnesses who had pointed everything out already up front. So they... When they took that to trial, by them, that's all they would have needed for the 12 jury to make a decision on us. They would have convicted us, even whether it was over one count or two counts, but they still would have got a trial conviction out of each one of us. You feel what I'm saying? Based on, now if we'd have had no witness actually point us out, we'd have had a trial case on our hand. You feel what I'm saying? And see, then not only that, they knew, just like for us, the big homie. The big homie would have got released, but still, he would have had to stretch, uh, ride it out like us in the county jail and go through the procedures. So what we did was we stopped all that because, you know what I'm saying, nigga wanted out. He didn't have no business there in the first place, so nigga wanted out. So basically, we just basically nipped it in the bud, basically. You so, feel me? so after you 14 guys took the deal, did that end the conflict between the bounty hunters and the Hawking family? Was that pretty much the end of it? No, no. For some years, uh, you know, the project was really mad at that corner for some years. We towed that whole corner now. So it took almost a decade for them to really bounce back and, and restructure. And at that time, yeah, of course, you know, we didn't, we didn't grow into our 30s and got older. And niggas had been back to the pen two or three times. But me right now today, I don't even eat on that corner, bro. I don't even fuck with that corner, period. I want to eat a burger out of there, man. It's still ran by the family. Yeah. I think and, the daughter and the yeah, son. Yes, yes. And so for me, you know, not, not tripping on it, but just the fact that my life, you know, I gave a part of my livelihood up behind that. So it's like, I can't turn around and go sit down and, and eat a burger out of there now and spend my money with them. Nigga, I thought that, you know what I mean? I allegedly did all the shit that I was supposed to did. And I ordered all these hits or I burned up your funeral parlor and all this allegedly. I can't turn around and go eat a burger from you motherfuckers. You feel me? But there are homies that do cross the street and go yes. to the right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And I, I'll cuss these niggas out all the time about that shit. Mm -hmm. I, my, one, my little homie Burger. Walked up on me one day with, a, with an HK burger in his hand. I slapped that motherfucker out of his hand, gave him twenty dollar bills. The nigga here, come on. I put him in my truck. Took him, come on, we going to fat burgers. I said, man, stop eating that shit over there. I used to be on the homie's head about that shit because I felt some kind of way. You feel me? Now, the, I want to say that um, Hawkins Jr., the son James Hawkins Jr., got twenty eight years for other stuff. Yeah. Other stuff too. This guy, he's in jail for other things. I just told you, that dude yeah. wasn't, wasn't no weenie, man. That dude wasn't no weenie by a long shot, man. Now, I don't, I don't want to just, you know, put it out there as far as, just put it like this. The, the brother was an important dude, a part, part of a very important prison structure organization. So he had power, in which we didn't know that. We wasn't aware of that at the time when it took place until I ended up in high power. That's when I really found out. Oh. So that means he's been to the pen before this happened? Listen, this is when I found out, oh, this nigga's connected. We just finna do what we had to do and find out this dude is connected. So before he shot my little homie, he was already on the run, bro. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. Nigga just, just shook San Quentin. Nigga was on the run from San Quentin and from up north. So he had a lot of anger already on his shoulder. So that was just the add up when Lil T came along and that case happened. That was just an add up. Just like 
We wouldn't have never went over there and went at the whole family like that. Same for Hawkins Sr. This is second murder. He just killed a 14-year-old girl for a pack of annihilators, shot her in the back, running out of the store. So it was already Tormor being built up at, at they, at, on that corner from them. But it wasn't no problem with us still because that happened to a little girl from Carver Park. So as far as our community go, we wasn't really tripping on it because it wasn't a loss for us, even though it was still a young little girl from that area. But when it happened to our little homie, now it hit home base. Now it's implicating us. And that's how we got involved. Thanks for watching CCTV.net. If you're not subscribed, please hit that button below and click the bell to receive alerts and notifications. Feel free to comment below so you can give us your feedback and be sure to watch the two related episodes to the right. If you want to support this platform or follow us on social media, visit the link in the description. Thanks for watching.